AAA games have been lacking recently from being unfinished either through a list of bugs like Redfall or it doesn't even feel like a game, just a concept in the case of Gollum. Costs are getting larger for both developer and consumer, but the quality is not proportional. Not to take away from the games that have launched right, like Elden Ring, Street Fighter 6, and the new God of War, it's clear though that with recent trends, indies have been a more consistent source of memorable experience, just from the volume. There are so many passionate people out there, uninhibited by publisher restrictions. You're bound to find something you love just from the variety. Some indies have launched into the mainstream like Hades, Hollow Knight, and Undertale, making their sequels in their series widely anticipated. Silksong, Hades 2, and Deltarune are day one pickups for me at least. This video is to highlight games that haven't come out yet and are either too small for a spot on a Nintendo Direct or are just not widely talked about yet. They are games that I am personally really excited for. No particular order by the way, I'm just saving my favorite for last, that's the only rule. Let's get started. This first one, no clue when it'll be out since it's so early in development, but it has a pretty fun concept. It's Jamphibian, a 3D rhythm-based action game. I know this might seem like a Hi-Fi Rush clone, but it's only similar in the basic premise. I also remember seeing a concept for this even before that released. It seemed like a 2D RPG before. Still, I have to imagine that game being so similar coming out during development will inspire the creator. Immediately different here though is the higher prioritization on traversal with the main frog's tongue functioning as a grappling hook. The rail grinding looks real slick too. It's nice to see another frog making it out here. Up next, Lorne's Lure. Now this game's trailers have done something to my brain. It reminds me of Blame, the manga with the impossible architecture that is distinctly human. Dude, I totally forgot that existed until the thing that I'm friends with brought it up. I've been lost oh, down here like... for 253 years. Dude, this is like Blame. The story from what I can tell is that you are a robot and you have this innate desire to see the bottom of this concrete world. You run, slide, jump, and you also have these picks that you can dig into the wall with, with a limited stamina bar. It's pretty atmospheric. The use of music is very minimal and the metal and concrete structures are just begging to be explored. If you ever read Blame and thought that was such a cool fucking idea for a game, then here you go. It's got that feeling. This game speaks to the wanderlust within me that asks me to walk into a cave and die. You ever feel that? I feel that a lot. There's a demo available as well if anything got you hooked. I played it on my second channel too, it's a chill time, check it out. That is insane. This game is definitely inspired by Blame. I'm gonna post images of Blame so that Michael appears out of nowhere to say based. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I would like Blame. I'm sure I would like it. It's actually very cool. You you wouldn't get it, but Hold it's cool. Hold Q to zoom in. Does anyone get it? What do you mean? I get it. Okay. Hashtag Blood is a 2D, almost top-down hack and slash. It's being published by Devolver Digital. The story is that a town is being taken over by various monsters, and Becky, the main character, needs to destroy them and free her friends from school. The art style is that of stylized cartoons. It is fluid, expressive, the colors pop and catch the eyes so easy. I think this team and the fellows behind Pizza Tower share a similar mantra. That being, They go another player to you gotta kill yourself. Some evil wizard had to sit down and draw this pineapple 30 times. Real fact, Pepino has 30,000 frames of animation. That is a lie. How many frames of animation does he actually have? Fucking a lot, probably. I'm not sure how long it's been in development, but I remember following this like a couple years ago. This is gonna be one of those games that people are inspired just from the impracticality. It is announced for a 2024 release. AeroGPX wears its inspiration on its sleeve. You look at this gameplay and you tell me it's not Chocobo Racing. And yeah, I, I could see some similarities with F-Zero too. Although the look and music seems more in line with the earlier F-Zero games, the gameplay is in line with the newer ones on the GameCube. The movement focuses on a ridiculous amount of fast-paced freedom at the risk of plummeting to your death. If I can get like six friends on this, this is gonna go cry. It is currently in the kickstarting phase if you're interested in supporting it. Bomb Rush Cyberfound is a spiritual successor to Jet Set Radio developed by Team Reptile, the team behind the excellent pseudo fighting game with a similar art style, Lethal League. It feels like this is the game that Team Reptile always wanted to make because, you know, the art style, it's... Look at it. Look at Lethal League, bro. I'm happy it's finally coming to fruition, too. Jet Set Radio is kind of a cult classic, and on honestly, I never really got to play it. It's a Dreamcast game, dude. I never... I wasn't... I wasn't in there. <laughs> the composer for Jet Set Radio, Hideki Naganuma, aka Skank Funk, 
aka Funky Uncle, is once again working with them. He worked with Team Reptile before on Lethal League, and now he's working on the spiritual successor to the game that launched his career. That might be the wrong phrase, Jet Set was just his most notorious work. The music was a big draw for that game, and to have Naganuma working on the successor, it just lends itself to the authenticity. Aside from Naganuma, there are tons of talented people working on the soundtrack. A very standout track is You Can Say Hi by Soya in the game's trailer. The release date is actually really close, just a couple of months from now on August 18th. This next game got announced as I was writing this script, so maybe you blew up as I was making the video. I guess you'll know by the time you see it, it's Resistor. The description describes it as a post-apocalyptic car PG, and as stupid as that genre title is, it explains a surprising amount. There's an RPG town to walk around in, races to take place in, a story to drive the game forward, and assumedly a bunch of customizability for your car. The gameplay is focused on racing, with several ways to destroy other racers' cars. The cutscenes they showed off looked absolutely phenomenal. It seems like it's going to be narratively digestible for a wide audience, so I'm not looking for something impactful in that sense. It's coming to all the newest consoles, Steam, and Epic. I'm expecting this game to blow up because of the marketable main character and cutscenes, so this might be kind of a cheat entry. I hope you'll accept it though. Coven is about a wrongly accused and burned at the stake witch, rising from the grave to exact revenge on the pedophile responsible for her trial through a brutal and bloody rampage. It's a shooter. I played the demo, and my surface level examination reminds me a little bit about Dusk. This game, however, has witchcraft for you to learn and to torture your victims with. There seems to be a huge variety in ways in which you can kill. The visuals are dark, low poly, with old looking textures. The music fittingly revs up as the action does too. I actually donated $10 to this game way back when the dev first opened up the Kickstarter just by the name Frog. I don't know if my name made it into the game, but I remember just asking him to put anything to do with a frog in there. A name on a tombstone was what he was offering, I think. A demo is available on Steam if you like to give it a try. I saved my most anticipated for last, Star Fetchers. This thing that I'm friends with, I guess you could call him a person, very recently showed this game off to me, and it's what pushed me to make this because it felt so wild and unique from music to gameplay to presentation and writing. It feels like the evolution of those old Newgrounds Flash games. It's crude, unapologetic, and funny as fuck. I don't know enough about music to talk about it, but the thing that I'm friends with made a good examination, I think. He called it industrial midnight television music. Sounds fart sniffy to me until he said it was like watching adults swim at 2am before and after the show starts. Now that, that I get. The game has you control a sword with your mouse and your character with the WASDA keys. You can avoid and parry bullets and other swords coming your way with quick slashes. Death starts the game right back up. No wait time, just get your ass beat and slash motherfuckers in twain. The visuals, pixelated, with huge varieties in color and is not afraid to experiment with higher or lower detail, or just something different completely. The story of the game, this nobody named Zambezi and a little loser named Sanyadi form a two-person gang to start taking over the city. It's kind of like an anime with how you're fighting increasingly bigger threats and being recognized as threats yourself. The ultimate goal is to meet and overtake Doghead, who is quote, the illest motherfucker in the zone. Although it's silly, it has relatable themes like corporate corruption, the pain of being average, and the desire and struggle for greater purpose. The dialogue is childish and honest. Characters say what they're thinking in the way that they're thinking at all times. Also, let me tell you, it's refreshing to play a game that attempts to be funny and actually succeeds at it. Oh my god. Playing this made me realize it's been years since I laughed at video game writing. <laughs> On its merits as a comedy, that is. I'm gonna be playing this one day one, and I'll probably make a full video when the whole game releases. We're currently waiting for episode one, but a demo has released for us all to play. Go download it and play it, or else I'm gonna kill you. I'm Frogwater. Thank you for watching. Let me know what indies I missed that you're looking forward to in the comments because I definitely missed something great. It's the nature of indie games, you know? That's all I got. So, see you later. There ain't no one.